This past week on the forums, Darwin did this excellent patch of the day thread. And if you hadn't been following it, I highly suggest you go check that out. Either search the forums or you can follow this URL, which we'll post in the um, page with this video. And in this, uh, every day for a week, Darwin went through and would post a patch that would show something useful about the dictionary object. So there's all kinds of objects um, to work with dictionaries, but also uh, a bunch of patches here and some explanation of how to use them, including um, hierarchies of dictionaries, etc. So this is pretty amazing uh, as a resource. And I wanted to build on some of what uh, happened here. This entire forum thread focused on using the max patcher interface to the dictionary object. Here's one example from that thread. And in this example, uh, what happens is that you can paste in some code from a patcher that you find in the forum or anywhere else. And you can hit the bang object here and it's going to push that through here, deserialize it and dump it into a dictionary. And there you have the max patcher structure. And that's enabled because max patchers are themselves dictionaries. So that's kind of neat. It might not be immediately obvious what you'd use that for, um, but there are some interesting things you can do with that, especially if you start using JavaScript. So I just wanted to introduce in this video how you might use JavaScript with dictionaries. Your first resource on that, if you open the dictionary help patcher, is to come find this JS tab. And in this particular case, we can click the bang, it will run the code in this JavaScript. And in here, there's a few things you'll see if you've used JavaScript that will be familiar. We have a variable D, we're making a new dictionary object, and it's using a name. That name will reference an existing dictionary, or it'll create a new dictionary with this name. Uh, and there's uh, an example here for accessing this in different ways. But what I want to show you right now is not what's in this help patcher. I'm actually going to do something uh, a little bit more extravagant just to perk your imagination about where you may go with this. And so for this uh, patcher, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Node.js application. And if you're not familiar with Node.js, you can go to nodejs.org. And uh, in this particular case, I'm going to use this version 4.4.4. .4. Basically, you just um, click this download link and run the installer for it. And if you've done that, you should be able, using the Mac terminal, run node-b, and it will tell you what version you have installed. Indeed, I have version 4.4.4 installed already. Go ahead and minimize that window. And I'm going to CD into this folder, which I will also have up on the page with this video. I'm going to CD into this folder called server. What this server folder has in it are a couple of things. It has an HTML file. It has a JavaScript file that I did not write. I downloaded this off of GitHub. It's called Bonsai. And what it does is it takes uh, various commands to create a SVG file, which is a scalable vector type um, graphics format. And then dictserve.js is the name of a little server I've written to run in Node.js. I'm going to run uh, node dict dot dict dash serve. Okay, now it tells me that I have a, my web server running at this uh, address. So, what do I do with this little web server? Well, I've written a patch that will interface with that. So here's a patcher, and in this patcher, it, you'll notice that it looks very similar to the patcher that we just looked at from the patch of the day series, because this is basically the same patcher. In here, we have a copy compressed patcher. We pass it through these objects to the dict object. Then the dict object goes a step further now. We're gonna pass that to this JavaScript. 
In this JavaScript, we create a new dictionary object, as we saw in the help patcher. Then we call the stringify method. The stringify method creates a string representation of the dictionary, which is suitable for doing something like passing the entire dictionary contents over the network. Uh, here I've posted that to the max window just because that's handy to see that things are working. And then we create an AJAX request object or an XML HTTP request object. This is like the max URL object you might see in an object box. And using that, we can interact with various web applications. It could be Twitter, it could be Instagram, it could be any number of things. In this case, we're going to interact with our own web application that we just made with Node.js. And the contents will be passed as this string to this URL. We know this is the correct URL because if we go and look at the terminal, when we started the server, it told us that this is where the server is running. Okay, I'll clear the contents of this window for the moment. We'll close the, uh, this and then we can post this to our web application. If we actually want to see something as a result, we can create a JWeb object. And then we have a little web browser right within our Max window. Resize that a little bit. And then I'll ask for the contents. And we can see that the patcher here is now being visualized here. It's not real beautiful. This is just sort of a rough sketch that I was able to cobble together quickly. But this is the contents of the patcher. The names of the objects are there. And you can kind of make it out. If we wanted to, we could be self-referential, copy all of this, do a copy compressed. And we could paste this very patcher into this window, send it over, refresh the web page, and now you can see we have the clear message, there's a button, and there's some other objects in very rough sketch form that are filling this out. If we wanted to see what's happening on the other end of our web application, we can drop in here into the server, So what's happening on this end is if we receive this dictionary, which is the post method, then it goes ahead and it gets the body of the um, JSON that was sent to us. And it saves that in this patcher, which is right here. It's just a global variable. And then if we get a normal web page request back, then it's going to go through and do some work on it over here and fill it in with the stuff in this index.html. If I go look at that index.html real quick, whoop, again, I wanna open this up in TextMate. Boxes are all the boxes in the patcher. Then we go through for each box. We assign each box to a variable called box. And then we can get the patching rectangle, which is the X, the Y, the width and the height, I'm making all the boxes gray for now, and then I'm going through and setting the font. If there is no font that's defined, then I'm using Arial. And then I'm making a group with each one being a little button thing. And it displays the name of the object. Some other things we could do with this web application if we wanted to is we could do something simple like return the number of objects in the patcher, or we could count up all the different kinds of objects. Um, maybe what objects those objects are connected to if we wanted to do some analysis of the patcher that way. That's just one possibility uh, once you start working with JavaScript, especially uh, with the dictionary and interfacing your dictionary to the world at large. Hope that's fun and inspires you to explore dictionaries and JavaScript uh, a little bit further.